What do you want me to do with him? I don't care what you do with him. Put him in mothballs. Do anything you like. Just get him out of here. In The Seven Year Itch, directed by Billy Wilder, the allure of romance and comedy unfolds through the talents of Marilyn Monroe and Tom Ewell. The film, penned by Wilder and George Axelrod, is remembered for the unforgettable scene of Monroe over a subway grate, her white dress fluttering an image that has become a lasting symbol of cinematic history. The way I feel about air conditioning is, no matter how much it costs... In the 1955 film, The Seven Year Itch, Richard Sherman is portrayed as a man experiencing a midlife crisis during a hot New York summer. With his family away, Richard's imagination runs wild when he meets his upstairs neighbor, a charming and attractive blonde. The narrative explores Richard's internal struggle and fantasies as he grapples with fidelity and temptation. The film delves into themes of marital commitment and the human psyche, showcasing Richard's humorous yet poignant journey through self-discovery and the challenges of temptation. The Brubaker's type of theory of the sporadic infidelity the film rights for The Seven Year Itch, a notable movie from 1955, were secured at a significant cost of $255,000. This acquisition came with a critical condition that the release of the film was to be held back until after January 31, 1956. This delay was strategically planned to avoid clashing with the theatrical run of the play, which was enjoying considerable success at the time. The play's popularity necessitated this deferment to maximize its theatrical potential before introducing the film adaptation to audiences. The financial investment in the screen rights and the strategic release timing highlight the film's anticipated value and the producer's commitment to respecting the ongoing success of the original stage production. Asking you to... Sure, sure. But you're not leaving yet, are you? How about some more champagne? In the production of the 1955 film, The Seven Year Itch, a significant decision was made regarding its release date. The head of 20th Century Fox, Daryl Zanuck, engaged in negotiations with the film's producer, George Axelrod, to secure an earlier release date for the movie. The original plan was to debut the film later in the year, however, Zanuck saw an opportunity to capitalize on the summer audience. To expedite the release, Zanuck agreed to pay an additional sum of $175,000. This move was strategic in ensuring the film could reach theaters by June 3, 1955, positioning it to attract moviegoers during the lucrative summer season. The negotiation was a testament to the studio's commitment to the film's potential success and their willingness to invest further to maximize its box office appeal. Tomorrow evening, do you know that made from 531 Park? In the production of the 1955 film The Seven Year Itch, director Billy Wilder and playwright George Axelrod encountered initial creative conflicts. Wilder, known for his sharp wit and cinematic mastery, found Axelrod's first draft of the screenplay inadequate, referring to it as nothing more than a doorstop. This term, often used dismissively, suggests that Wilder saw little value in the script as it stood. Despite Axelrod's success with the play upon which the film was based, Wilder demanded significant changes to adapt the story for the big screen. Their collaboration required a melding of minds to bridge the gap between Axelrod's theatrical vision and Wilder's cinematic perspective. The process was a negotiation of storytelling methods, character development, and the translation of humor from stage to film. The resolution of these differences was crucial in shaping the film's narrative and comedic style, ultimately contributing to the classic status the seven-year itch enjoys today. The film's enduring popularity is a testament to the successful resolution of these early disagreements and the combined talents of both men. All right. Goodbye, Helen. Goodbye, Goodbye Ricky. Oh, let me kiss you. The 1955 film, The Seven Year Itch, faced content restrictions due to the Hayes Code, which prohibited explicit depictions of adultery. Consequently, the film adaptation diverged from the original play by George Axelrod, where the main character, Richard Sherman, and his neighbor referred to simply as the girl have an affair. In the movie, directed by Billy Wilder and starring Marilyn Monroe and Tom Ewell, the narrative suggests a flirtatious relationship without showing an actual affair. This change was necessary to comply with the strict moral guidelines of the time, which shaped the portrayal of relationships in Hollywood films. The film is well known for the iconic scene where Monroe's white dress billows up as she stands over a subway grate, a moment that has become one of the most famous images in film history. Daddy, 
then he lured her down into his apartment. In the 1955 film The Seven Year Itch, the character portrayed by Marilyn Monroe serves as a pivotal figure whose presence challenges the protagonist's fidelity. The filmmakers Billy Wilder and George Axelrod decided against naming her character, which lends an air of mystery and universality to her role. She is simply referred to as the girl, which emphasizes her role as the object of the protagonist's fantasies. This choice reflects the character's purpose in the narrative as a catalyst for the protagonist's internal struggle and the comedic situations that ensue. Her interactions with the protagonist, Richard Sherman, played by Tom Ewell, unfold in a series of events that humorously depict the challenges of marital fidelity and the allure of temptation. Working in New York, in the 1955 film The Seven Year Itch, a particular scene was removed before the movie's release. The scene featured Yogi Berra and was intended to be part of a sequence that depicted various rumors about the character Richard Sherman's supposed fame. The sequence aimed to show Sherman's concerns about how his interactions with his neighbor, played by Marilyn Monroe, might be perceived by others, leading to widespread gossip. The inclusion of Yogi Berra, a well-known baseball player, was meant to amplify the extent of Sherman's imagined notoriety. However, the scene did not make it into the final cut of the film. The reasons for its removal remain part of the production's behind-the-scenes decisions, which often involve editing for pacing, narrative focus, or running time considerations. Furniture, a dictaphone, ten fingers to type your miserable letters with. Mr. Sherman, take a look at it. During the filming of The Seven Year Itch, Marilyn Monroe's frequent delays in arriving on set caused significant frustration for director Billy Wilder. This issue was not just a minor inconvenience, it was indicative of a deeper tension between the actress and the director. The situation escalated to the point where it affected their professional relationship, leading to an even more challenging collaboration on their subsequent film, Some Like It Hot. The pattern of tardiness exhibited by Monroe became a notable aspect of her working style, which, despite her star power and talent, proved to be a recurring obstacle in her collaborations with filmmakers. In the 1955 film The Seven Year Itch, the presence of bell chips as a prop served to elevate the brand's recognition among audiences. This product placement allowed bell chips to enjoy a surge in popularity as viewers associated the snack with the glamour and humor of the movie. Despite this boost in fame, Bell Chips eventually ceased operations in 1995. The use of their potato chips in the film remains a notable example of early product placement in cinema, demonstrating the potential for film to influence consumer behavior and brand success. Nurse. The nurse? You mean that sweet little old lady with the gray hair? That was the day nurse. In the 1955 film The Seven Year Itch, one of the most memorable moments is the dress-blowing scene featuring Marilyn Monroe standing over a subway grate as the air causes her white dress to billow around her. The scene was originally filmed on location in New York City, but the presence of a large crowd of onlookers and fans led to significant noise interference. The production team decided to reshoot the scene in a controlled environment in Hollywood to ensure the quality of the footage. Joe DiMaggio, who was married to Monroe at the time, was reportedly present during the initial shoot and was said to be displeased with the spectacle it created. Despite this, the decision to reshoot the scene was necessary to capture the visual effect desired for the film without the audio disruptions caused by the public's excitement. The reshoot was successful and the scene remains one of the most celebrated in cinema history. It's gonna be quiet spill around here tonight. In 2011, the dress Marilyn Monroe wore in the film, The Seven Year Itch was auctioned for five, six million. This garment, known for the scene where it billows around Monroe as she stands over a subway grate, became a symbol of Hollywood glamour. The auction, which featured this piece, was part of a larger sale of Hollywood memorabilia collected by Debbie Reynolds. Reynolds, an actress and collector, had hoped to establish a museum for her collection, but eventually decided to sell it. The sale of Monroe's dress was a significant moment highlighting the enduring fascination with Monroe's image and the history of cinema. The high price it fetched reflects its status as a notable piece of film and fashion history. 
Debbie Reynolds, witnessing the dresses sale, was moved emotionally, reflecting the deep personal connection and the value placed on such Hollywood artifacts. Chapter three. The 1955 film, The Seven Year Itch featured Marilyn Monroe in a leading role during a period when her personal life was under intense scrutiny. Her marriage to Joe DiMaggio, a former professional baseball player, was highly publicized. The relationship faced severe challenges with reports of DiMaggio's controlling behavior and allegations of physical altercations. These personal struggles took a toll on Monroe's emotional well-being, overshadowing her professional achievements at the time. The stress of her marital issues with DiMaggio, along with the pressures of fame, are said to have contributed to a decline in her mental health, affecting her work and public image. Joe DiMaggio's relationship with Marilyn Monroe continued to be one of support and loyalty even after their separation. Following their divorce, DiMaggio sought to reconcile, providing Monroe with both financial and emotional backing during the more challenging periods of her life. His dedication to her well-being was evident as he remained a consistent figure of support up until her untimely death. DiMaggio's reverence for Monroe did not end with her passing. He maintained a tribute to her memory by ensuring that fresh roses were placed at her crypt for years thereafter. This act of remembrance is a testament to the depth of his commitment and the respect he held for Monroe long after their marriage had ended. A distant church bell, a flight of... The Seven Year Itch, released in 1955, stands as a significant film that continues to be celebrated for its contribution to the era cinema. Directed by Billy Wilder and featuring Marilyn Monroe in one of her most memorable roles, the film captures the essence of the period's social attitudes and gender dynamics. Its story, centered around Richard Sherman's comedic struggles with fidelity, resonates with audiences even today. The film's portrayal of the lead character's inner thoughts and fantasies broke new ground in filmmaking, offering a narrative technique that was ahead of its time. The Seven Year Itch is released during a decade known for conformity and the idealization of domestic life makes its exploration of marital restlessness and fantasy particularly poignant. The film's humor and lighthearted take on a subject that was considered taboo at the time contributed to its lasting appeal. Moreover, the iconic scene of Marilyn Monroe standing over a subway grate as her white dress billows around her has become one of the most enduring images in film history. This moment alone has cemented the film's place in popular culture, making it a subject of study for film enthusiasts and historians alike. The Seven Year Itch's ability to capture the imagination of its audience with wit, charm, and a touch of rebellion ensures its place as a classic piece of American cinema. Anything else I can do for it? Yes, would you mind pressing it again? Press what? The button. My 